So there's a fire build in Elden Ring that absolutely melts enemies. I am just in love with the overall fire theme, so I did want to play with something fire oriented. Well, that is actually possible, and not just that, it can one or two shot most of the enemies in the game. You will literally see 10k plus in damage if you build this properly. And luckily enough, you don't need too many resources or too many items. Some of them are even acquired from the starting zones to make this build shine, so let's talk about that in this video. Now, the way this build works is rather simple. You're a pyromancer, a god of flame, and your purpose is to one or two shot most enemies with your flame abilities, but you also want to buff the damage on them to crazy levels. Besides using items, we will also make use of the flame grand me strength that gives you a roughly 20% increase to your fire related abilities. This includes both these as well as any other source of fire in your build. But the bread and butter that you will be using is the giant's flame and of course the flame fall in AoE situations. The giant's flame specifically is this huge ball of fire that you hurl at the enemy. It's rather close to medium range but it deals super high damage. Even an uncharged version of it can deal way over 1000 damage and charging it up fully also gives you another 50% damage increase to almost like 15 to 1700 depending on your build. So that's already a pretty big one between this and the flame grand me strength. Now in AoE situations or when you go up against enemies this is where the flame fall ability comes into play. It kind of hurls a lot of balls at the same time and it covers a pretty wide area in front of you. Unlike the previous ball these do not stagger or push back enemies. It just passes through them but this also means you can deal way more damage if you angle this properly or go against a larger enemy. Now there's a few other abilities in there that I also use. Burn of Flame is another amazing one. It kind of summons about like seven or eight of these fire pillars that deal about 17 to 2000 damage each. This is amazing to have in very large combat scenarios when there's a ton of enemies or a very large boss so to speak that can fully take the entire damage otherwise you could be wasting it. Now obviously the best class to start with in this case would be the Prophet. You already get the Catch Flame at the beginning of the game which is a good substitute until you get the better versions and you can also buy the Flame Sling from Corin at the round table hold which is the lesser version of the Giant's Flame so it can definitely work early on. Now in terms of weapons we're gonna make use of the Dragon Communion Seal which is possibly the best in the game at least when it comes to investing the minimum amount of points required while still reaching the maximized damage potential. Reason being is because this is a hybrid seal that kinda scales off both Faith and Arcane. So it's a hybrid, it only requires 30 and 45 points respectively into those two stats instead of 60 plus for some of the pure Faith ones out there. So in this case you only need 30 points into Faith and 45 into Arcane to fully reach that incantation scaling of 325 in this case, which is literally comparable if not almost the same as the Earth Tree Seal that requires over 60 points into Faith to reach that point. But unlike that seal, you now also have the Arcane Scaling, so now all of your incantations also scale with an S rating every single incantation damage type that you do with this build, and not just that, you also get the benefits from higher Arcane with this build, including like way better item discovery, also better vitality, and increased build up for stuff like blood loss or well madness or pretty much any other type of build up in the game. So overall a really overlooked dragon seal to be honest and well probably the best in the game if you want to go with these types of builds. Now the other weapon that we're going to be using is actually more defensive if you can believe it. It's the serpent god curved sword right here. Also quite an early acquisition. Basically what this does is it heals you for every single creature or thing that dies near you. It doesn't even have to hit that target or even be the one that deals the killing blow. As long as you have that equipped in any slot, you will get that heal for every single death nearby. And it doesn't just stop there, you can actually change the Ash of War on it and it will still give you that heal over every kill. In this
this case you can totally apply a royal knight's resolve to buff up your spell damage by like 100% at the very least and still get the heal over time with just this sword equipped so definitely something that works very well with the previous ones now in terms of armor the only noteworthy one i'll talk about is the silver tear mask that gives us eight points into arcane so this means we can reach our goal eight levels faster or distribute eight more points into a different stat and you know get better damage survivability or utility the rest of the armor doesn't matter just get something you like to look cool or to get more protection in terms of the talismans is where yeah all the magic happens we will buff our damage by at least another 50 percent with these ones one of them that straight up buffs your damage by about 12 percent for all incantations is going to be flux canvas talisman that you get from gory especially if you finished yeah that millicent quest line i explained that in the previous video you just have to defeat millicent at the end go against her and you should find this upon gory's body the other one is godfrey icon you get it from a mini godfrey boss fight around the altus plateau and it enhances all of the charged spells and skill damage so this includes these um yeah god's flame abilities as well if you fully charge them this is going to be another 10 percent damage increase of course marika's scar seal is very useful still plus five points into some of the most desirable attributes for this build including some of that mind some of that intelligence faith and especially arcane and finally this is where it kind of diverges and you can use whatever you want if you plan to just annihilate the enemy before the battle starts and if you have the time window to open up that you can use the ritual sword talisman which raises that attack power when your hp is at a maximum so yes that includes well in this case spell damage too otherwise you can go with something else that might increase your faith that might provide more utility or that might achieve a stat or just give you some other type of bonus that you want but in this case if you open up the battles this is probably going to be the best now in terms of the items you can find the dragon communion seal very close to the starting area pretty much here at the graveyard there's going to be a fog wall that requires about two stone keys open it up navigate the tunnels avoid the annoying chariot and there's going to be an enemy at the end of it that will drop the seal for you right away now for the sword you have to go right here at the ruin strewn precipice just navigate these mines go up the ladders until the second last one before the boss in the area which is an annoying worm so in this case instead of going to the boss you will want to go to the opposite direction up this ladder right here at the top there's going to be a rooftop with some annoying blob enemies and behind the big blob enemy there's going to be the sword right away for the two spells that you will use the most with this build you can head over at the guardians garrison right here in the mountaintop of the giants and just make your way through the castle all the way right here at the top find the giants prayer book and bring it back either to the round table hold or to the thirdes and you will have access to the giants flame and the flame fall abilities and finally the ritual sword talisman is something that you acquire from the lux ruins right here on this side of the map after defeating the boss in that dungeon so it's like another super early acquisition and this should make the build finalized and overall really in love with the fire aspects of Elden Ring I think there's a nice selection of very powerful fire abilities in the game it's probably not like the overall best build in the game but it has huge damage easily reaches over 10k damage especially if you also use the Royal Knights resolve and buff up that damage but do keep in mind that that might get fixed eventually so overall even if you don't make use of that you will still deal damage in the thousands like 4000 plus even without the royal knight resolve and if you use that you will deal 8 to 10 thousand but not on all enemies so just keep that in mind this is it though with the build let me know what you think down below and i'll see you guys in the next one